Hello all, I am Prasad and welcome to Automation Insights. Today we are going to see how to check if the required columns are present in the data table or not. Let's assume you got this data table output from a read range activity or using the data scrapping method. And now we want to use this data table. So to use the data table, we need the column names. So if you are specified the column name and if that column is not present in the data table, it may throw an exception. So it will throw an exception called a column name does not belong to the data table. Or if you want to add a column to the data table and if that column is already present in the data table, it will throw an exception called the column is already belong to the data table. To handle both these exceptions, today we are going to check if the columns we are going to read or if the columns we are going to add is already belong to the data table. I have already created a structure of data table using build data table activity and you can see there are some columns I have assigned. So the columns employee ID, name, age, country, gender, DOB. So these are the column names I have assigned and assign this output to the DT table variable. So the DT table is a variable of type data table. And now create an array of string variable to specify what are the columns we required. So I have created a variable called array valid column names and the type is array of string. So I have created it and let me close the variables panel. So we can use an assign activity and then we can uh, specify the columns names we required. So array valid column names and in the value field we need to specify the column names. So it is an array of string. So new string of the column names we required. So the column name we, go, we are going to specify is gender and age. Both these column names are present in the data table. So let me close the pop-up. So we can see that the build data tables output is the variable DT table. So now we are going to check if the column names are present in the data table or not. So to do that, we may need to add an if activity and then we need to give the condition. So let me delete the empty sequence. And then we need to use the message box to check if the columns present or not. So for testing, I have used message box, but in real uh, process, we may need to do some alternate process if the columns are not present in the data table. Okay, let me write the message box in the then part I have write required columns are present. That means the columns we required for the process are present in the data table. And in the else part, uh, maybe I can write the columns are not present. And now we can start write the condition in the if activity. So let me expand the editor. And then now we can start write it. So the array variable, the one which we manually gave. So dot all. So all of the uh, conditions inside this function will have to be true and then the lambda expression so function of uh, a temporary variable name so it can be anything for now I can give like required column names so this is the column name we required inside this DT table which is the data table output from build data table activity dot columns dot cast of data column so why we need to use cast is because we need to uh, tell that it is a uh, collection of data column property so we need to uh, uh, specify that it is a data column dot any so any of the columns uh, which have to be true inside this again a lambda expression function of the actual column name which we get from the data table so i can give like act column name uh, so it is an custom variable name so it can be anything and then inside act column name dot so this is an data column so we need to get the column name so act column name dot column name which will give the actual column name of that particular data column dot to string dot equals and then we need to give the uh, column name from the array which is the Require column name so req column name dot to string. 
so it will compare all the uh, column names from the array with the actual column names from the data table and returns true if it is present in the data table so let me close this editor and i will show you what actually the uh, the lamp uh, the link query is doing so let me open the excel file which contains the column names from the build data table activity so these are the column names which present in the data table and then in the array we have two columns one is gender and the next one is age so let me open the notepad and then copy the link query and paste it in the notepad so let me copy the link query and then open the notepad file and paste it so let me zoom it a little bit so we can actually see what the link query contains let me maximize the notepad application so we can see what the link query is having okay now we have two uh, items in the array gender and then age so it will loop through both the items in the array so first it will take the value gender and then it will assign it to the variable require column name and then it will start looping through the data table columns and it will compare the actual column names with the uh, variable require column names which contain gender and if it any of the column names matches gender it will return true and then it will uh, again loop through for the age and check all the column names of the data table and if any of the column names matches it will return true and if both the items returns true the final output will be true so let me copy gender and then age and copy that into the uh, the excel file so first we copy gender and then let's assume we compare that with the actual column names so the gender is not equal to employee id so it will return false and then it will compare for the name which again return false and then uh, it will do for all the items column names in the uh, data table and when it comes to gender gender equals gender so it will return true so for the remaining items it is false so any one of the items will have to be true and it is true in case of gender so the final output will be true so for gender it is true and then it, we do the same operation for age so it will loop through for age and it will do the exact same operation it will uh, compare all the column names which uh, contains age if it is contains age it will return true otherwise it will return false so if any of the column names come equals age it will true so both the uh, array variables are true so the final output will be true so let me minimize the excel and notepad application and now we can run the uh, workflow and we see if it is returning true or false as we see the message box shows required columns are present that means both the items uh, in the array is present in the data table so both the columns are present in the data table so now if we add in column name called status in the array so the status is not present in the data table so it will return false so let's see how uh, the process is done for status so it will again compare the status uh, with the data table column names and not one of the column names are matching with the column name status so it will return false because no column names is, uh, is status so it is false and if all of the uh, array variable conditions is true only it will return true because one of them is false the final output will be false so now if we run the workflow it will return false and it will show the message box required columns are not present so as you can see the message box required columns not present so today we have seen how to check if the required columns are present or not if it is present we can continue with our process if it is not present we can do an alternate process as the process needs